Hey guys, Gogsy here and welcome to a special video today. I think you can call it a two and a half thousand subscriber special because I've reached that now. Thanks a lot guys. And yeah, basically I was invited into Cam Glen Radio, which is a station that a fellow Motherwell fan, Stephen, uh, does a Monday show. And yeah, so I got invited in to do an interview and I really enjoyed it. Thank you Stephen for inviting me along and yeah, hopefully we can work together more stuff in the future. Anyway guys, that's all from me. Tata for now. I'm joined now by Goggy. How are you doing Goggy? Um, you? I'm alright, how's yourself? I'm good, I'm good. Um, so I believe that you're actually going to be doing a HMD course in radio next year. Yes, I am um, indeed, at Fife. So this will be quite good practice for you then, to get a, <laughs> get a wee interview. Yeah. Um, go on. What or who inspired you to start becoming a YouTuber? That is a very good question, you see, uh, back in the days, uh, back in like 2013, obviously KSI was just starting out, if you know of him, uh, and yeah, he sort of inspired me to become a YouTuber, I thought, right, I'll bang, a, bang out a few videos, see what happens, and I got nothing but hate, but <laughs> God, God loves a trier. Yeah, well, I think, I think, particularly at your young age, hate can yeah. be... Bob Wayne Dallas at times um, <laughs> but I so why in your opinion is YouTube and got so big over the last like five to seven years? Because like I talked to my friend Sean and his little brother Declan and uh, his cousin Kyle, who by the way are massive fans of yourself. Oh great. Um, Thank you. Uh, they just love watching YouTube videos and they, they speak about how they want to be the next big YouTuber and stuff <laughs> and it's just like Oh what started this by what? I think what's so easy about it now is is now so easily accessible like you can just flick a few buttons on your internet and then there it is bang there's lots of videos to choose from to watch and also you can get it on your phone and it's much more accessible than say what tv shows nowadays yeah yeah i totally get what you mean there <laughs> uh, and I suppose I was always a big fan of yourself, as you know. Um, <laughs> but I, I was, I'm doing a documentary for my college, and I was thinking I could maybe do, like, obviously it's for radio, but I was maybe going to film a bit of it as well, uh, uh -huh. just to see. And I think it would be quite interesting to do a video of a football game from a disabled fan's perspective because. That's not that's not a, a thing that a lot of people know about, you know what I mean? So yeah, I completely get what you mean. Quite um, put to the side a wee bit, I think, sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just hidden away in the corner there at Fun <laughs> Park, it's, it's not very fair, in my opinion. Um, and at the DSA as well, we are um, yeah. doing a lot of work at the moment. Uh, we've totally shaped the whole thing. We've got uh, positions for um, people uh, by the fighting centre at the minute, so yeah. it's totally positive. In my opinion, you should be put higher up. So then you can watch a game from from up high, so you don't have to properly like crane to see see from about. All oh, right, I'm talking rubbish. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but but get a better view of the game, be like in the middle of the pitch. So exactly. Like yeah. So like in there. the main stand. Yeah. Um, but I think the problem with that is um, money. Do you know what I mean? Trying to get yeah, true. To pocket money to put. Um, uh, the investment in. Mm -hmm. But um so back to your YouTube mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. Wait, is there anywhere that you're hoping that it's going to lead? Or are you just doing it for fun? Well, as I started off, like I, I did it for fun. Like I, I was never really thinking about getting like hopefully a proper job out of it. However, uh, as I've been gaining a lot of subscribers over the last couple couple of months, uh, you know I've never really even thought about doing it as a proper job. Although I'm not, I'm not doing it as a proper job at the moment anyway. However, it's it's difficult to put. But um, I've always wanted to sort of be like a football analyst, like so the sort of stuff that Chris Sutton does, but obviously not be so controversial, <laughs> if if you know what I mean. Uh, slagging off a lot of teams, but I, I sort of do that on YouTube anyway. Yeah, no, but I believe uh, you get a wee bit of a stick for yourself oh, uh, after don't the Raiders game. But no danger, gonna, no danger. We're going to talk more about that after we hear a wee bit from Frankie, Frankie Rizzardo. So stay tuned, this is called Same Man. Oh, that's true. Do you want to know, see the thing is about radio, right? I'll tell you this. Yeah. Um, 
You shouldn't be nervous because I've made so many mistakes on here. Do not say capitals that we can't go on. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Ooh. You see me you go out there? Yeah. Don't hear anything of it. That's it. It's done. It's yeah. left in here. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's all about just trying to improve week by week and get better. That's what yeah. the only thing you can do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then being on radio is really about getting information about the artist. That's yeah. the important thing because but I'm, it's like I'm a bit like trying to get my personality out there as well. Do you yeah, know what I mean? definitely. Dad from the DSA just came out with an idea. Uh -huh. Instead of me doing like a YouTube video uh -huh. of the disabled youth, he just said extend all the invitation to join us in the shelter for the game. For the game, yeah, I'd happily do it. It'd be a different view as well. You know what I mean? It's just quite a different experience for me. So. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll take this from you and then you'll parade a wee bit as well. That's alright. You know what I mean, man? Yeah. But what I, what I was wanting to speak to you about as well, mm -hmm. why don't we start on NFC Fan TV? That is a very good idea. Because, like, I was, uh, I was actually and thinking that. And you can lead it because you've already got the platform for you. True. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I see what you mean. And nobody in Scotland does it. It's only in England. Yeah. Like, here, I'm, I'm already. You, you, you will get stuck to it, obviously, it's just it's part and parcel of the That's, that's part of life, though, isn't it? You need to stick with it, do you know? Yeah. If, if anyone in Scotland sees someone confident, they'll try and strike you down as soon as they see you. By the way, it's crazy how quickly tangles when you're on the Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've sort of realised that from when I was doing like live streams on my YouTube channel. Because I, I used to stream FIFA and then I decided I'm bored of FIFA. <laughs> Oh, FIFA's so boring for me, it's just... It's too much of the same. It's too realistic. I'm trying to make it too Realistic hard. is good, but you need, they need to realise it's just a game. I know. You need that game feel about it, let's see the old crazy, uh, the old crazy. Yeah. Whereas, nowadays it's confusing my, my mum with actual football. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, who's playing now? I'm like, oh, it's me against Mark, my yeah. friend. <laughs> How did you, what did you think came up with this thing? It's, it's good, aye. Good form. I don't mind you being critical though because I like to hear that. Do you know aye. what I mean? I don't mind you That's being fine, negative. Like, well, you know, my, my, my style on my YouTube videos is like, I don't even I don't even have like a plan of what I'm going to say. I don't, I don't script it. It's you just something. Yeah, I just cool. talk rubbish and then see what see how it goes and then I put in the best bits. Is it going to change though when you're only yeah, going to drink though? Because oh, oh, you're only oh. getting a drink before games, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh no, I've not even thought about that, but a lot of my friends are being like, Go see, I can't wait till you're 18th, and I'm like, oh dear, dear. I've got to invite you to that, by the way. I'll come. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'll come. Now, uh, back to that interview with Gogsy. So, we teased a wee bit that you went in vile after the cup game <laughs> at Ibrox. Um, how was that for you? Because I'm telling you now, you weren't the only one in tears that day. I think Kenny Muller <laughs> broke about 950 hearts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Plus more watching at home. How was that for you? Well, obviously it was heartbreaking the fact that Kenny Muller scored twice in the last five minutes. Uh, although, I did defend myself by saying there were no tears running down my face. So technically I wasn't crying, but I was crying out loud. Uh, but, yeah, so I got home. Like, on the way home I met up with a couple of friends and then obviously I got home, I thought, right, let's watch this back. And I didn't, I honestly didn't think there was anything wrong with it. And, of course, yes, it was me swearing quite a lot, but I didn't, I didn't expect to get the attention that I did. I mean, obviously, right, I just whapped the video out, uh, put it on to YouTube for Sunday, I think it was. And then the next thing I got was, a notification from a Rangers fan on Twitter uh, just sharing that wee segment of the video. So technically I wasn't getting any views from it, so I was like, alright, we'll see how this goes. And then all of a sudden I was getting a message from a friend, uh, Corey, straight with him. Uh, he sent me a screenshot of one of the Rangers fan page's Instagram uh, posts, and it was me again. I was like, okay, this is sort of weird. Uh, the next day I woke up to seeing my my, my my video was shared on the Blue Sea of Ibrox or something like that and I was like wow right this is sort of getting out of hand 
and then at school, because I'm still at school, of course, I'm a sixth year, and uh, the, the first thing I heard was, uh, Gogsy, you go on a lot of Rangers fan pages or something like that, and then the, the proper realisation of me thinking, wow, this has really got crazy, was when my PE teacher in higher PE uh, said, Gogsy, why were you on my Facebook news feed this morning? <laughs> oh man. I, I seen it and I was like, that's Gogsy. There he is. But I, uh, I, I just, I just um, left right away. That was me, I was yeah. straight at Ibrox. Um, but um, obviously, there's been a lot of famous players that have played for Rangers and Muddle oh, yeah. back in the day. And we'll be going through a 1 to 11 Aye. of um, all time uh, for those um, teams shortly. Uh, yeah. But what I want to know from you is, if you could do an interview with one footballer from any either, who would it be and why? Right. I, I actually thought with this with my mum last night, uh, and obviously uh, the the one player I did want to interview was James McFadden, and I got that last year. Uh, I was privileged enough for my, my uncle to arrange it with me, and thankfully it's over 20,000 views on my channel. But uh, from any era at all, I think Pele's a good shout because obviously you can speak proper English, unlike most of the foreign uh, players that I had in mind, like Maradona, I don't think he can speak English properly. Uh, and there's probably a few others out there, uh, like Eusebio as well, that and I thought, right, he'd, he'd be a cracking player to interview because of his form at the 66 for World Cup. Yeah, and uh, it's funny that you should mention that it was Faddy and you actually got to interview Faddy. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, <laughs> I've been friends with him since I was about eight years old. Uh, Aye. And I've got a wee story uh, that some of the listeners might not know. Um, I was down. For the Everton game, uh, we were sitting in his house, he's like, do you want a game at ISS? Which was like, basically all pro evil, back in the day, right, so he's beaten me 2-1. Uh, oh dear. And I'm like, Faddy Mo, go and score on OG, we'll take it in at extra time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he does that, and then uh, I got him scoring the last minute, beat him 3-2. So he was not too happy, um, but I will Faddy make the 1-11. to 11. You'll just have to stay tuned. Here's Koba with a rush. Twenty, are you 16? 17. 17. Aye. 17. 17, aye. I look about 12, but... I'm the same. I still get... I'm 23, right? Aye. Yeah. You do look young for 23, but... Well, I, well, I see that you're doing what I'm doing, you're 18. Oh, I'm 17. <laughs> Wait, he's talking in Paul and Bob's mate. Oh. oh. <laughs> Phenomenal, mate. Phenomenal. <laughs> see me you say you're a radio presenter as well? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> so, me and Gogsy, we're going to delve in to our 1 to 11 of Mullow players. Bear in mind, it's players that we've seen play. So, any Mullow fans out there have gone, why is he not in it? Why is he not? It's because we probably haven't seen him play yeah. in the flesh. That's the rules. So, Gogsy, let's start with the goalkeeper. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Right, I've gone with Darren Randolph, easily the best goalkeeper of our time. It's exactly who I went with myself as well. Yeah. It was a toss up between him and Ruddy for me. But, um, I'll, I'll tell you a story, it. right? My uncle, who's obviously t Team Doctor, uh, the first time I actually heard of Dan Randolph, I was like, right, w what's happening with this situation? Uh, all I knew was he was from Charlton. And basically, what my, my uncle said that he was the fittest goalkeeper he'd ever seen physically. And yeah. I was really impressed with him. I think you could tell that because he was so fast off his line, yeah. commanding his area, great shot stopper, they had everything. Mm -hmm. And he's not West Ham's number one for a, uh, no reason now. So uh, no. He's, he's fantastic. I actually remember uh, Christian Daly uh, saying oh, in the yeah. papers, uh, I can't believe he's let this guy go. Um, he's the best goalkeeper I've seen at Tartan in a while. So um, that just shows you the mark of the goalkeeper we were getting. And I mm -hmm. think. After we lost him, as fans we got a wee bit blinkered. Yeah, because um, Gunnar Nielsen wasn't really much uh, on Randolph and unfortunately neither was Dan Twarzik, but Dan Twarzik was still a very good shot stopper. They were both good goalkeepers, right? yeah. they both had qualities. But Nielsen's specialty was saving penalties. <laughs> that, yeah. that one against Celtic, I was jumping about my living room for about 12 minutes afterwards. You always remember the penalty save against Celtic. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll go into the defence mm -hmm. uh, after we hear a bit of Ryan Maxwell and Nathan Clyde. I've got a bit of Porter Robinson on the way after this as well. Mm -hmm. 
Porter Robinson with Limey and by the way, because I've seen it in Gogs, he's dancing during that. It's <laughs> not welcome in a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> no, Definitely no, not. No, we're joking. Um, but, we're, <laughs> but we're on to uh, our defence now, um, which, uh, to be honest, we, we used to have quite a good time. <laughs> we did, see, but see, uh, see, uh, things have uh, properly can, gone downhill since then. We, uh, we can go with a wee bit this season, but yeah. now under Robbo, I think it's. Um, it's um, we've been, sort, we've been certainly sewn up, up a wee bit, yeah. um, but we've still got the worst goal difference in the week, which I'm hoping we can rectify because that could be pivotal. That's fine, we'll, we'll put four pass in Vanessa, I'm sure, uh, on Saturday, so hope, here's hoping. Um, <laughs> so I uh, I went for Martin Corrigan at right back, I know you you can't really remember, Kaiser, is no. he going to play? Uh, um, his last season was my first season. Uh, but uh, really in his early days, goals, he got up and in the wing. Well, it's Stevie Hamill used to, um, yeah, Stevie used to. Away for the end <laughs> <laughs> um, But no, he got up and down the wing. Uh, he wasn't afraid then um, to have a shot. Um, oh, you know what I mean? Could have um, done that now. As well, uh, which I think that now you seem to want to walk the ball into the net quite a bit. Yeah, but to <laughs> Italian. Yeah, to Italian. Yeah. But when it, when it comes off, it looks brilliant. It, just, it, it just, does. It just we we look like a proper football team off. when we're winning 3-0, but we still need a fourth. Um, <laughs> but I, I went for him. Who have you went for? I've gone with Tom Haley. Another great right back. Yeah. He, he can just, he's the one with a free kick specialist as well. Um, Could do with that now as well. <laughs> What's your favourite Tom Haley goal? Because there was a few. Well, I wasn't there for the free kick against Rangers. Uh, but I did see... One uh, corner goal that he scored, which was against Morton, so probably not so important, <laughs> given that we won six, we won six nil that day. I've got a few memories of Tom myself. Um, one of them was his goal against Rodents, which gives a wee bit of a chance in the Europa League. Did, did you um, go to Denmark? No, I was watching it in uh, Jack Daniels. Uh, oh, yeah. Other bars and Mullabot are available as well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just just uh, in the interest of fairness. Um, but I, that and his goal against Rangers, um, but I. He was definitely a um, set piece specialist yeah, at the top. Definitely. And uh, he, he got quite a, stick, a bit of stick off the fans, and I think he was one yeah. of the players we should, when you took him out, um, that's when you know you missed him. Yeah. Um, my centre back, so I'm not going to uh, say too much about these, I went with Stephen Cregan and Sean Hutchinson. Well, I've gone with uh, Sean Hutchinson, and I, I was torn between Stephen Cregan and Stephen McManus, but I've gone with McManus, but both have got excellent international experience. I think we missed Craig the minute we took him out of the defence. I thought yeah. I, I just think there was something missing for me because uh, he was uh, a no nonsense defender. Yeah. And he just he just cleared the ball the minute it came into his area. And I know it's good to play for the back, but sometimes it can be costly. Um, definitely, definitely. So uh, that's why I went for Craig and Sean Hutchinson. Just yeah. I don't know why he's not um, went on to excel down in England. I, know. I just thought he was absolutely. Hutchinson, I don't think we realised how much we missed him until he was gone. Because the amount of goals we conceded the season after we lost Hutchison that we wouldn't have conceded if Hutchison was there, you know. I know. And um, my left back, Stevie Ham. I, I agree. You've got Stevie yeah. Ham as well. I, I don't think. To be fair, there's not many contenders for no, your time. No. Stevie, I think Stevie Ham was played in every the season, but I. Yeah. No, no, no disrespect to Stevie. I don't know why he never got a Scotland cap. I really don't. I think he'd be. Did he not get one? I th maybe in a friendly yeah. impact against. Sweden was it? Sweden, yeah. but uh, and I, um, I, don't, I don't know why he never he, played more. He was also involved in the Wem Wembley friendly. Yeah, he was called yeah. up to the squad, but I don't know if that was Mark McGee's <laughs> doing. Uh, yeah. uh, it uh, might well have been. Um, but no, uh, Stevie, Stevie Hamill definitely. Uh, um, he's made hundreds Stevie. of appearances for the club, and uh, hopefully he can uh, steer us towards safety. Yeah. Uh -huh. But um, here's a wee bit of Katy Perry loving this one. Here's Chain to the River. Wait. Right. No, no, it was a good, a good story. Uh, basically, I think it was last Tuesday. Um, Hodgie shouted to him. Uh, basically, he told everyone in the chat, right, like, pick a team. And so, obviously, Aberdeen were playing Inverness, and we were going for all the big teams that were playing the wee teams. And so, I went, I said, I, I suggested Aberdeen, and of course, Aberdeen won. So, 
and there was about eight different teams on this coupon, and he put well twenty quid on it, and he got one thousand one hundred pounds back. God, man. I know. I was like, you should have given me a cut of that money. God, man. I know you didn't even give me that because I kind of bought your coupon. Save myself. I did do a coupon a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was, and Millwall did me for seventy quid. Put put a fiver on Millwall. Millwall, I know. Millwall were playing very. I always do that as well, mate. I pick favourites. Mm. Yeah. I see how many views on YouTube videos go on there. Since I, because I shared that after all this morning. Oh man, that's depressing. <laughs> that. So a few things. What was the first YouTube video you remember watching? That is a very, very broad question. Uh, obviously, I, mentioned, I think I mentioned earlier that I, what, I, I still do watch KSI's old videos, or what's left of them now since he deleted them, but it was probably some animal video, like, I think, about seven years ago it started, wasn't it, or something like that. So I was very immature back then, so it was probably some rubbish meme, meme <laughs> compilation. What is um so you took inspiration from KSI uh, obviously you paved the videos from him, but what is the paved the video of yours that you've done? Oh well, you've done quite a lot. I don't know how many it is in total, you'll probably be able to tell me but uh, I haven't I can't actually remember the amount the amount of videos I've produced but it's definitely over nine hundred. That's a lot of videos. Yeah, I, I I can't even count to nine hundred. Let, let alone do 900 videos. It's a lot of some, some YouTube have. time, man. <laughs> oh, definitely a lot of time editing as well. But uh, my favourite one, probably right, the exact date, 19th December 2016, if you remember that day. 2015 even. 2015. God, yeah. you're testing me now. Uh, uh, Mult scored twice. The, fir scored the twice. first time he scored more than one goal in a game for us. Oh, who is that against? Was that against Celtic? Indeed it that was. was against Celtic. That was by far my, my most favourite day of my life so far, supporting my little. When we beat them at uh, Celtic Park. Yeah. I've got a mate uh, who is a Celtic fan. Um, oh, condolences. All <laughs> <laughs> um, and all day before that he was given it. It's going to be 4 now by half time, it's going to be 4 now by half time and we went 2-1 I just text him saying What's the score, mate? <laughs> I, I actually thought we were going to win that day, to be fair. I thought we would win 1-0, but... Do you know what was weird about that game for me? Mm -hmm. It was, uh, we were all over them. And I remember yeah. Lionel having a chance. Right before they scored. Right before they, and then they went 1-0 the up. And you're just thinking, I've been to so many games. Yeah. It's certain part of the time we've played well. And I remember one where Tom Haley missed a penalty. It could be 1-0 that day, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was terrifying. Yeah, oh. tragic, um, but I... Uh, and you think it's helped to score, you're like, ah, that's the game done. Yeah, then, we're going to lose about 2 or 3 nil there. Yeah, to score right away, just we're right back in the game. Aye. Fantastic. And they slept on eight that night as well, so. Oh, yeah. That made the effort to go to the game a wee bit sweeter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you're a massive Motherwell fan. No. If you had the job for the for a day, for right, a day. what would be the one rule you would implement that would have to stick right. for the for the, the rest of that? I'm, I'm going to be cheeky and here and say... For the players. I'm going to be cheeky and say, uh, any tackle below the neck against the old firm, right. it shows you're not trying, get it sorted. <laughs> right, well, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, I remember Ryan Bowman's one against Kieran Tierney, that was absolutely dreadful. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, well, from <laughs> Kieran Tierney to put his knee on Ryan Bowman's stud, it was... No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, that was a shocking tackle, I don't know if I've ever seen that from do you like catfish in the bottom? Love them. Very good mix. Excellent. I've got another couple of questions for you. Yeah. Alright. Before we go back into the, the... We'll go with the two winners after we do these two questions. Okay, yeah. Um, so, uh, what are your first memories of following my love? Right, a long time ago, my first ever game, I think it was February 2005, might have been. Uh, my dad was going to the Dundee Motherwell game. And because it wasn't so far, right, of, of course I didn't think logically about this. <laughs> uh, so I thought, right, I'll go just to please Dad. And I got bored after five minutes because I'd run out of sweets. 
<laughs> and then at least it wasn't in the football. At least it was uh, the fact that you done it. Uh, no, I, I was I was so young, so young back then, and then we scored, and I got the fright of my life. I was literally in tears because I didn't expect us to score, which is probably the the norm now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you still don't expect yeah. it to be filmed. Like. And then we got beat two one. Uh, my friend Jamie will be giving me pelters, but uh, yeah, we we got beat by Dundee, which is of of course the norm now as well. But yeah, I was just not happy, not happy. Um, so uh, obviously you're well into your YouTube career now. Oh, where, where, where do you see yourself in ten years' time? Are you want to still be doing the YouTube or do you well, think you'll go? As long as there are still people that want to watch my content, that's what that's what drives me on the most even if there's like 10 people in the world that want to watch my videos I'll still make videos but uh, within the next 10 years I hope to have travelled quite a fair bit because uh, I don't want to just well of course I, I want to see every single Motherwell game there is uh, of course I'm not missing a game yet this season uh, but uh, you always like to boast about that as well I do I do I love to boast uh, not missing a <laughs> game yet this season um, but, I... but uh, I, I want to travel to different countries, see different football, see different cultures as well. So hopefully I can get to do videos and that as well, and might might even boost my subscribers. You've you've been to uh, Man City, Liverpool. I, I myself have been to a few Premier League yeah. games, and I just don't quite get all the fuss. <laughs> no, me, me I neither. don't. I don't get all the fuss. I mean, obviously the talent in there's second to yeah. none. They've got talent, but. The crowds are so quiet, there's yes. no atmosphere in any of the grounds. The only place that I've been to that's provided a wee bit of atmosphere for me was St James's Park. I mean, yeah. I've, I've been to Old Trafford and I've been to Goodison, and Goodison can be, can be loud, but only, really, when, they're winning, only when they're winning. But Newcastle has constantly got a, a good bit of atmosphere, in it, and that's why I think the English team and the two to follow them, just because yeah. of the passion that's involved within the fans, but I don't quite grasp the, the or the fuss. But the thing is, what I prefer is smaller grains like Far Park, because the atmosphere is more enclosed, and you get to feel the passion a lot more. Whereas, like you said, like at places like the Etihad, literally it was terrible, terrible to listen to all the fans. Because every, every time, like a few weeks ago when I was at Man City Liverpool, Every time Liverpool went forward, I heard a Man City fan shit, he's offside ref, or whatever, I'm like, come on, I'm losing brain cells just listening to you. Scott <laughs> McDonald wasn't playing, so they're definitely a little bit less offside in that game. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, on, on to our wingers now. Um, uh -huh. I've went for uh, Ross McCormack in the right now. He could have played up front, mm -hmm. but I had to get the two that I went for then, so uh, he was moved to the wing, unfortunately. How long was uh, Ross McCormack out of our team? He was only there for two seasons, but still, I think... Well, he didn't really show himself in the first season, did he? No, but the second season, he was on he's, fire. The, he's the reason that we finished third, I think, is it? Yeah. His play was just incredible. I, I, one goal I remember seeing him score was against Aberdeen when the ball was rebounded off the keeper and then he, he flicked in from an impossible angle it went in off the far post. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. I think we beat Aberdeen 3-0 that day. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I wish those times were back. <laughs> <laughs> they, will, they will be soon, don't worry. And who did you go for, right wing? Uh, right wing, I went for Chris Humphrey. The whip it. The whip it. <laughs> that, that, that's the only word that comes in here. I'll tell you one thing. I was so disappointed when he signed for Hibs. So disappointed. Uh, so was I. I thought um, that we we missed we missed a turn there. Now, yeah. that's not to say that Cat hasn't done a great job this no. season, but... We're but missing that piece. Has, but he's just... He's just got that. We extra burst of energy. Yeah. That, that That's I think, what we're missing. To be fair, I think we took it away for kids. I think we bulked, yeah. kids, bulked, bulked them up too much and made them too heavy. Uh, which he's might too much of a centre midfielder to play it wide. I think we've made him too heavy, and that's why he's not he's not got the pace that he once yeah. had. Because when he when he first came into the team, I was like, wow, this guy's going to be special for this. Yeah. And he still he still can do that, and he still shows glimpses. I mean, uh -huh. he delivered his second to none. I think he's delivered his. Aye. Fantastic, but I think we've built him up too much, too heavy. Yeah, definitely. Um, left mid, I've went for Jamie Murphy. Now I know a lot of people out there will be going, why have you not put Marvin Johnson in there? Mm. And i tell you uh, why. Because Jamie Murphy is an all-time goal scorer in Europe. 
Uh-huh. You can't ignore that. For me, for me, yeah, you can't ignore that. Um, and I think, he, as well as Chapman and my goal, he's a sus up there as well. Yeah. He was always in double figures. And for the he always tried. Whereas Marvin Johnson, the last couple of games he played for us, in my opinion, he, he didn't try. Dundee draw 0-0 at home. He knew, he knew he was away, I think. Yeah, yeah, he knew he was away. But the draw 0-0 against Dundee at home, first half we completely dominated him. And then second half, Marvin was just, po he was posted missing. <laughs> but I, but I, it was, that play playoff games against Rangers, I think he's, yes. he deserves a man, massive amount of success. And now Man City are winning him. I know. Crazy. Please take him 20 million and we get two, 2 million for a signing on fee. Aye, I'll lock it I'll lock it up. I'll close it again. Uh, we'll put him on when we sold but uh, we'll be back with our centre mids and uh, our strikers a bit shortly. Uh, I'll have your traffic and travel with Derek up next week. Here's a wee bit of catfish and the bottom one. Another great night is on, that I'm going to is on Saturday. It's a mother will play the year sponsors night. And it's just it's forty five pound a ticket for anyone who wants to go. You get a play at your table, and uh, Tam Cowan is hosting the night as well. Are you going along, eh, Goggy? I hope so, but I just need to sort out my funds and... Your mum's in there, so just give, give yeah, them a look. Yeah, just give them a look, eh? Yeah, but What's no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll be a good night. Tam, Tam's always uh, up for the laugh, so... That'll Went forward to that. Uh, so, centre mid. Uh, I've went with the uh, like, great Phil O'Donnell as one of my first ones. Uh, because it, it just gave you everything. I mean, the energy... It would, up and down the pitch like nobody's business. It was typical box to box uh, uh, midfielder. Chipped in there a few goals as well. And actually, the game where they sadly passed away against Dundee United, it's one of the best games that I think I've seen them play. Like, he actually, if I remember right, he was man of the match that day. Which just oh, that's a shame. Good scores to show you never know the minute. It was real, real tragic, tragic circumstances there yeah, that day. You could have heard a pin drop in the stadium and it was just one of my saddest days falling. Probably one of those well, days that I'm glad I missed it. Yeah, Just yeah. for what happened. Yeah, obviously you never want to see anything like that anywhere. But um, uh, it was a real horrific day. I mean, I just remember the ball going out for the goal kick. And then I always turn around to see if I can see my mate in the clipper stand. My mm -hmm. mate Cal. Yeah, when the ball goes out. And I did that. And, uh, I just the minute there was a cheer in the next minute, I just hear silence. You could have heard a pin drop. It was, it was horrific, but um, definitely one of the greats. Forward on, and my other one I went for Steve Jennings. Uh, who, who's your two? Well, I'm just going off most recent seasons because, of course, I'm that young. Yeah. Sorry, uh, don't worry, man. There's players you've seen. Yeah. And you bet with a diamond formation. Yeah, ball, I've so got a diamond formation. Who's your holding midfielder? Uh, my holding midfielder is Keith Lasley. You can't not have Lasley in there, in my opinion. He's always worked hardest, and especially on Saturday there when he came on, he actually added to the team because, of course, he's he's 37, I think, and the fact that someone 37 could actually run the length of that pitch all day long. See, this this is the beauty for me. When you're doing this, there's no wrong or yeah. right answer. I mean. I had Laz down, and then I just thought Steve Jennings. Well, he was amazing. But he was uh, you, can, you cannot fall uh, Laz's service to the club, and uh, to, to be still going at 37 uh, years of age, he's up there with the best ones. Crew with Kenny Miller. I don't mind uh, me. <laughs> uh, sorry, I know you get scared every time somebody says that name. It's oh, a bit definitely, like, definitely. It's a bit like Harry Potter when he hears Voldemort. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, don't say that name either. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so that's who I went with. Um, and my other midfielder, well, I've gone with more of a support in the front two. Uh, I've got James McFadden. No, I, I don't. Have I got him in? I'm not going to reveal that. No, I think, you know, you have to have Faddy in the team. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I just don't think he's got the pace to, oh, well, back when we saw him uh, on his second spell, uh, I don't think he was fast enough to go on the white, on the wings, but um, back, back in his first spell, he could play anywhere. Absolute engine. He he was just um I he, he would go by players as if they weren't there. Exactly. Yeah. And that's something you just don't get these days. No. I'll tell you a story though. That 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 night that Faddy scored that goal in Paris, right? 
my mum wanted me to go to bed. How dare she? That's that's. <laughs> Aye. So and my dad said, no, something special's going to happen, and uh, but I still had to go to bed, and then uh, as because the TV is situated in my living room, you could just see through the glass door. So I was hiding on the staircase, just with just just revealing my head enough so I could actually see with both my eyes. And when Faddy struck that ball, I just I was mesmerised by the way it just hit the back of the net. And oh, you, you could hear me from like three streets away. I was going <laughs> mental. Well, I've got a wee story as well. My dad. Um, Turned the TV off with two minutes to go to wind me up. No way. And then Kiddy Don was listening to on the radio and he went, Flats have scored, no way. <laughs> and as you can imagine, I went mental. What I said to my dad isn't fit to broadcast on air. <laughs> uh, no, I was going crazy. Um, but that was a good night in Paris. And here's oh, a wee bit of the chain smokers. That was very well done. Very well done. To get away from your parents and I thought I've not stopped listening to that song last few days. I don't think that we could work this out. Mum's cringing so much. <laughs> I'll wrap up a pass of the fakers and then your feet go, your feet stay, it's up to you. But we're done after we do this. Right, that's fair enough. What a tune, Soul Dance, Martin Jensen, and before that we had Paris by the Chainsmokers, and that was certainly some night in Paris when Faddy scored that goal in France. But he's made my strikers, he's one of my strikers in my 11. So, uh, who's your first striker? My first striker has got to be Michael Hayden. Yeah, yeah, he's my second one, so there yeah. you go. He scored the most amount of goals for us post war in one season. So, for that alone, I say he's definitely in there. Yeah, I think he, he, he had a lot of players around him that were helping. Definitely. Um, uh, as well. Uh, but, uh, I so let me guess who you're saying. Yeah, I go for it. Henrik Oyama. Correct. Got to be. Got to be. Correct. Um, he, he's, his assist play was phenomenal. Oh, yeah. He didn't have to score, but he always got an assist. It's mental to think in that team we had the likes of Humphrey, right? We had. Uh -huh. Jamie Murphy at one point and Murph left and we brought in Faddy. Yeah. We had Nicky Wall. Higdon, Don't mention that name. <laughs> Higdon, Higdon and Oyama and Nicky Wall who took um, a massive pay rise to go to the Warsaw off team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, um, And then um, we also had uh, the likes of Hatley, Hutz. Yeah. Reynolds, I think at the time. No, it was Reynolds. Yeah. Nah. No, no, no. I can't really remember. Hutchison that. and Craig and saw that it wasn't because Reynolds yeah. left. Reynolds had left. Uh, yes. And Stevie Ham, uh, what a team that was! Uh, Absolutely brilliant. And who's your bench? Just run through that quickly before. Uh, with the, uh, some class that names that I've met, and they're all most of them are really sound. Uh, John Sutton, Lane Lainsworth, John Ruddy, Stephen Cregan, Lucas Yukovich, Forbes, uh, that guy that I was really disappointed to see leave, and he's now at Morton. Uh, of course, Geno, and can't can't have can't miss out on Lee Mo. No, no, definitely right there. Yeah. Um, but I, I would probably have, I would have Lucas Jukovic. I know you've criticised him a wee bit there, but I would have Nicky Wall in there. I just thought yeah. he was brilliant. Um, I actually get criticised for having Ross Forbes. I definitely have Ruddy, mm. Mark Reynolds, he would be there as well. And uh, our last one, Henry Yama, since he never made my life. Yeah. There we go. Uh, but after the news, uh, first of all, God too sorry. Thanks very much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me, it's, it's been just, a pleasure. Uh, done a wee bit earlier than expected. But, uh, uh, all the best for your YouTube and channel. And uh, uh, thanks. Everyone subscribe please. Right, subscribe, <laughs> it's Gogsy99, Gogsy's G-O-G-G-S-Y-99, is that right? Yep, that's it. There we go. You're looking ahead. Um, after the news, I'm going to have a wee bit of Z for you, stay tuned. Can't play the radio news. Thank you for having me. Partnership. Well,